Hi, my name is Corey, and welcome to my mess. Today we're going to fix the fuel leak on a 93 Jeep Grand Cherokee with a 4.0, and it's these two lines here on the fuel intake rail. All right, so I started having a fuel leak on the supply line here on my Jeep, and I've already taken the clips off and played with this for a couple days trying to figure out a solution. Uh, first thing I did was call around, no luck, called the dealer, and uh, they only show a 5 16 on my particular model, or any model for that matter, and I have a 5 16 and a 3 8 line. They were able to give me a number, part number, for a 5 16 fuel line repair kit, and I crossed it over at Napa, and it comes with this guy. It has a nice little insert tool, new retainer clip, two washers, and a bushing. Uh, the problem is it didn't fit with mine because inside of these fittings, there is a black retainer ring, which is this guy. So I'm assuming that you're supposed to pick out this old retainer ring so that you can use this new style clip compared to the old style. You can see that there is an extension on the front of the clip. So this wouldn't work on mine. If I line up the clips, you can see the depth difference. So anyways, that wouldn't work. I took the seals off of this kit and I tried to pick them in and out so I could fix one of them, but it still didn't solve the problem of not having both sizes that I needed. So to the 3D printer. Uh, I went into SketchUp and I started designing all kinds of different models based on the original one and just cutting different things apart and trying to figure out what would work. And what I came up with is a little jaw. This can be inserted into the fitting. And well, I still have the fittings in there. So this is inserted into the fitting. This plunger is inserted. And when it does, it ex keeps these three jaws expanded to ensure that this comes out because you're committed once this goes in and boom there's that little retainer clip nice so that was a big bonus and because there's two sizes i had to scale it down to make one for a 5 16 as well and these files will be available on thingiverse and i'll put the description and i'll put and these files will be available on thingiverse and i will put them in the description below so now both of those are out they're ready for the new seals. But first, I had to find donors, which wasn't that hard to do. Napa sells both the 5 16 and the 3 8 each in two packs. I've had to already take two of these apart just to make sure everything fit. And my plan is to take the guts out of these and use them as donors for this. I don't want to go making new fuel lines. I wanted to have it OEM. This has made it almost 30 years. Um, I don't know if I'm the first one to change these, but I can't imagine I'll have to do it again, but I'm sure that someone else has run into this issue. So to change these, we'll go ahead and take three eighths one out. And I'm gonna go ahead and insert the new retainer onto the fuel line. And then I have to get these guts out and into that fitting. And that posed even more challenges, but we know how to get the guts out. Let's do that. It does take a bit of force here, a little wiggling. It's about all my grip has. Bingo. I got the retainer in one of the O-rings, and then using a the seal pick, very gently, without damaging what's in there, get the last two out. Nice. Then to get this guy off of here, you have to push the plunger back. And by doing that, it allows this guy to collapse again. O-ring off, retainer off. So to install obviously creates its own issues. So I had to make install tools in both 5 16 and 3 8 So the way these work, so you'd put the retainer on the same way that it would go into the, the whole assembly is gonna go in this way. So the chamfered edge of this little retainer clip goes on first. And the O-rings in the same color that we had them there with the bushing in the middle and a little bit of oil. And I always use the dipstick. It's a handy dandy little applicator here. All right, there's that guy. And 
this clip goes in here and all that whole assembly drops right in there. And actually, let me take that off for a second. So that goes in all the way and it's seated in the bottom of that fitting. This guy is going to push it all in and just kind of watch through the side there and make sure we don't cut any O-rings. There it is. And then just have to push that retainer in. Clips, or it snaps rather. Take the center piece out. You can see everything's in there. Three eighths is done. It's pretty easy now that it's done, right? This was about eight hours in SketchUp yesterday with all these different revisions and printing. But man, it's worth it. I had priced out replacing the fuel lines and custom made lines were gonna be around 200 bucks and they wanted to do a compression fitting on these two. I wasn't a fan of that either. I've had bad luck with those. So we have the retainer off. We have to go in there and pick out those seals again. There's those three. Make sure I didn't damage those in any way. Get out my 5 16 installer tool. Chamfered edge out. Yellow, white, brown. A little bit of oil. that guy in there fits in there nice and tight and that one does go in too deep when I up upload these to Thingiverse I will make these center pieces a little bit longer because they're not the easiest to get out make sure I don't have any o-rings hanging out the side I didn't hear it it's not in there Huh, okay. What are the odds I have the wrong retainer in there? Oh, you know what? I think I do. Did you notice my slip up there? I didn't use the OAM one. This is the one that came out of that replacement line. Let's try this again with the one that came out of the fitting. it is clipped right in okay so it's important not to mix those retainers up must be just the slightest difference oh take two got a little ahead of myself huh don't drop it there it is Retainer clip on the line, and that feels pretty sloppy. I'll bet you that's a 3 8 5 16 Make sure my fuel lines are routed in the right way. Look at that. And we'll check it for fuel leaks. And I didn't mention, I should have mentioned initially. Oh, you know what? That doesn't look right either. There we go. So if you do go to do this in the beginning, obviously you'll have to drain the fuel pressure. And to do that, there is a Schrader valve back here, and it works similar to a tire. Don't do this when the engine's hot, but depressing that center valve carefully can release the fuel pressure. It will spray, it's under high pressure. And then don't turn the key on again. Um, I actually, as my kind of lockout tag out procedure for vehicles, the key goes wherever the repair is, so that I have to go back to the repair and acknowledge that it's done before I can have the key to the vehicle. I do have spares, but I have primary keys for everything. So. Just my little method of madness. Maybe it'll work for someone else. Um, I'll also include in the Thingiverse files, I modeled the stock pins. I shouldn't say stock. I should say the one that they came with from the, manu the manufacturer, the 5 16 I did model that in both the 5 16 and the 3 8 And obviously, I had a little issue there, but that is for both the 5 16 and 3 8 Napa one, okay? So if yours happens to differ a little bit, these will be labeled as OEM. Just something to keep track of. So with that said, we're gonna cycle the key a couple times and see if we have any fuel spray.
Ooh, I heard the pump. Built pressure. Bump it. Nope, didn't hear the pump again. Well. Grab the camera so it doesn't fall over and make sure everything else is secure. Here we go. With this, obviously time will tell, but I did have a considerable leak previously on that 3 8 line, and there's no evidence of it now. It's cold when it's hot. Uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how this works. And again, this is, I, I spent way too much time online trying to figure this out, and I'm thrilled that with the use of a 3D printer, we're able to come up with things like this. Uh, if you're interested, this is a 0.6 nozzle PETG with 0.2 millimeter quality. Uh, it's just the standard quality. Used a Cre uh, Creality Ender 3 printer. And I've had fantastic luck with it. I've made so many different things, uh, which actually all started, I'm in construction, and we were unable to get a lot of our parts, like siding gauges, for example, during the pandemic. So I printed my own siding gauges, and I was able to bill for those gauges as I used them on the jobs. And so the machine paid for itself within weeks. And anymore, I just push print. Uh, there's so many things uh, that I've made also that I really highly suggest that anybody's interested in it or CNC work at all, start with a 3D printer because this has really been a lot of fun. And to be able to do like I did here, my other options were junkyard or having new lines made. And you know what? I'd much rather just have these available to everybody. So I thank you all for watching. If you found this interesting, please like, subscribe, and share, and uh, download the files on Thingiverse. They're there for free for everyone to use. So with that said, I thank you all. Have a great day. Bye now.